<laughs> Zach Morris is trash. It's the first day of senior year. Zach's eager to exploit susceptible freshmen. Like this kid looking for the bathroom. Zach says freshmen pee at home, unless you buy one of his passes. <laughs> it's going to be a long year. Kelly wants to know who found dates for the senior party. Zach says the hard part is turning babes down. A lie. Ann Belding has a C-plot wig. Who cares? Zach spies a new woman to harass and demands her attention. Must be her first day. He'd remember her beautiful face. I bet you say that to all the girls. Well, I do. But this time, I mean it. Zach's corny mind game somehow work. Slater takes the non-creep approach, asking permission to sit. What's her name? Joanna. And where she's from? You know, normal human shit. Zach arrives late. Hey, boys and girls, it's time to rock and roll. Let the party begin. <laughs> to hold up class like an asshole. Zach and Slater both met a girl. Slater says she has a pretty smile. Zach uses her to call another woman ugly. She makes Madonna look like Bart Simpson. Slater sees his special someone. Zach says, no dummy, that's mine. Instead of talking to his close friend of many years. Zach asks if Slater invited her to the party yet so he can beat him to it, instigating an awkward double invite that overwhelms Joanna. Joanna wants time to think. Zach signals they should not leave her alone with her lady thoughts, then kicks Slater's chair to humiliate him. Unlike Slater, Zach does not ask permission to sit down, and crowds them at a desk meant for two. Causing a scene, Zach tries to resolve with unwanted touching, landing them all extra homework. Slater apologizes for Zach. Zach offers to help Joanna do the punitive assignments with a study session at his place tonight. Slater wants to take her to a movie tomorrow. A real date. Instead of Zach's sad transparent attempt to graze a butt cheek while reaching for a pencil. Put her heads together so our minds can touch. Really? Go with it. It's a proven study technique. Slater interrupts Zach's sham studies to say he owes him $20 and he's here to work it off. A valiant effort to guard this young lady in peril and remove Zach's homework that is surely just a list of sneaky ways to touch a thigh. Zach tells him to beat it. Joanna feels bad because Zach is acting like a jerk. Then invites Slater to join because if they are, in fact, here to study, the more the merrier. Slater takes Joanna on a legitimate date. Zach has Screech pose as a menacing usher, then hires a woman pretending to be Slater's mom to say Slater invited her to the movies. I've never met this woman before in my life. How could you treat me this way on my birthday? Real classy touch. Screech corroborates the despicable story of Slater's momposter. Joanna, mortified, makes room for this stranger while Zack gloats. Slater accurately feels that wrecking his date by making it look like he hates his mother was too low, even for Zack. Zack says it was retaliation. Forgetting his chair kick started all of this. Zack escalates his smack talk with a weak shove, and after getting shoved back, sucker punches Slater in the face. Slater, a trained fighter, defends himself and uses his body to end Zack's spasmatic flailing. Belding realizes this must be over a girl. He warns 22 years ago, a woman ruined one of his friendships forever. Zack's simple ass wonders what the very obvious point of that story is. Belding makes them shake and agree to move on. But instead of moving on, Zack hounds Joanna about the party. She's not going with either of you, dumbass. Zack immediately runs his mouth. Zack enters the party pouting. Where's Slater? Slater who? Very mature. Slater wishes everyone a great year, then politely removes himself from Zack's toxic environment. Zack bullies Slater, who just wants a drink, then splashes him. The fuck kind of move is that? Slater defends himself from Zack's attacks, then helps Zack with the only chance of getting his dick wet anytime soon. Belding intervenes, and Zack feels safe enough to get physical again. Belding's C-plot wig falls off, and their shared laughter offers a moment of clarity. Slater, of course, makes the first apology. And we never see Joanna ever again. Because after the misery Zack put her through in the first week of a new school, she probably fucking killed herself. Let's review. Zack Morris called dibs on the new girl, but after she hit it off with Slater, tried to pressure her into a date. When she wanted time and space to think, gave her neither, and commenced his violence. Then tried to fix the consequences of his behavior with a bogus study trap. And when Slater took Joanna on an actual date, framed him for scorning his mother on her birthday. But instead of apologizing, kept pushing. Then sucker punched his friend over a girl he met two days ago, and learned nothing continuing his harassment and assault, and couldn't be the first to say sorry and never apologize to Joanna, Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Kelly's parents had an emergency and she stuck with her baby brother Billy. But cheerleading yearbook photos are first period. Slater says of course the gang will help. Zach says no thanks to that baby. But since everyone else has academic priorities, of which Zach has none, Zach needs to care for Billy. So Zach throws Kelly's baby brother in a duffel bag, rolling around, unsecured. Shockingly, Billy does not like this. Zach tries bargaining with the bag baby to stop crying. He says he doesn't know much about babies, which checks out. He's 
storing one in a bag. Zack orders Billy not to pee, something he's surely done by now out of fear. Billy keeps crying because he is trapped in a zippered prison with no visibility and limited oxygen. Zack takes credit for the loud whining, then mimes over the whales as Billy's pained, ignored outbursts fill the class. Lisa says Kelly had a major accident. Zack shows zero sympathy. Kelly sure picked a great time to break her arm. The gang agrees the best thing to do is leave Billy with the nurse or building. Zack's ego shoots down both ideas because he falsely believes he can handle this task that he's clearly incapable of. Zack's debating if he can hide Billy in his locker during his track picture. Slater realizes Billy, who has been crying for hours, might need to be changed. Great, so he's been sliding around that bag in his own mess. But because Zack feels a prideful need to prove he alone can care for a baby, he is well on his way to murdering. He destroys Billy's last diaper. Zack wraps Billy's unwashed, rashy, shitty ass in one of Slater's old shirts, then fantasizes about a tiny blonde version of himself, who sneaks contraband into school and sucks at sports, and grows up to be the worst kind of college bro. Huh, that sounds about right. Zack wants to get rid of Billy to take his track picture, because an athletic glamour shot is definitely more important than keeping him alive. The gals warn they will be too busy in home ec class to watch him. Zack says that's perfect. Maybe they can cook his hungry baby ass a meal. Home ec is offering an unexpectedly convenient cover. But the magic waiter, who also takes school photos, sure, why not, wants a class picture. They put Billy down and signal Screech, who was sent by Zack to pick him up. But when Screech returns Billy, that's not Billy at all. Where is that baby? Zack reprimand Screech for botching the baby errand he could have done himself, then yells at the gals who were clear they'd be too busy to watch him. Zack says we need to find this baby. Yeah, no shit. And despite all of this being his fault, blames everyone else. Kelly returns from the hospital, wanting to see her brother. Zack lies and sends Jesse to get him from that place he is, then stalls by having Kelly pose for a picture, while Zack points at everyone to secretly slam dozens of lockers behind her back. The perfect plan. The gang hears Billy. Belding somehow got a hold of him. Truly a life-saving miracle. Zack lets it slip how worried he was, alerting Kelly to the fact that he lost that child. Then covers with a very unconvincing lie that they left Billy with Belding to take their pictures, which is, by the way, what they should have done. And they're here to thank Belding, who has no idea what they're talking about. Why doesn't he remember? Because he's getting old and already suffering from memory loss, gaslighting him into believing he has the early stages of dementia. Siegfried and Polaroid shows up to immortalize the deceit. Zack offers to carry Billy back to Kelly's, revealing his investment in this project was all to get into her pants. And Billy's first word is Zack, because this egomaniac talks about himself all day long, apparently in third person. Gross. And we never see Billy ever again, because that baby probably fucking killed himself. Let's review. When Kelly needed someone to watch her infant brother, Zack threw that baby in a duffel bag, then ignored his desperate cries for hours as he repeatedly soiled himself in darkness, and only thought of himself when Kelly broke her arm and let his pride get in the way of Billy's safety, then when someone else had to inform him about baby diaper changes being a thing, let his ego interfere once more, wrapping Billy's filthy body in a sweaty shirt, and gave Billy to girls who said they were unable to keep an eye on on him, then got pissed when he went missing. Also, Zack could get a dumb yearbook photo, and lied to Kelly about Billy's whereabouts, and lied to Belding about having dementia, and only did any of this to get laid. Zack Morris is trash. Zack Morris is trash! You're watching Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. And now, the Divorce Dad's Cooking Show. I have a special guest today. Howard lives in the same apartment complex as I do. You're gonna show us a special uh, ketchup sauce you're making. You first uh, grab some ketchup. Out of your pocket. Okay. Add salt. Uh-huh. Boiler. I thought you made homemade ketchup. That's just ketchup packets with salt. You call it cowboy ketchup and then the kids like it. Oh, it's cowboy, it's special. That's just salty ketchup, you know. That's great. Sounds like a divorced dad tip, huh? <laughs> call it cowboy anything and the kids will eat it. Your 40-year-old virgin movie continues. Keep watching for more Cooking for One, Cooking for Three every other weekend on Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. Zach Morris is trash. 
Zach Morris is dreading Mr. Testaverde's midterm, a teacher who strikes fear in students when you yell his name for no reason. Jesse is studying with books. Zach mocks her literacy, then gambles his sunglasses on a water balloon quick draw Zach's lost three days in a row. Make that four, because Slater set his dopey ass up. I couldn't throw at a friend, you pinhead. Yeah, sounds like you really like the guy. But Zach can't stop the bleeding and rolls the hallway dice again. He bets his ham radio when Slater says Kelly will be next down the stairs. Zach stalks Kelly and has a troubling constant knowledge of her location. She's in volleyball practice. Except she isn't, because Slater got the drop on him again. Zach's displeased he's being fleeced like the simpleton he is. Zach signs off one last time for all his fans out there in Radio Land fucking no one, and send Screech to the roof to do the dangerous work of disconnecting the antenna, which causes Screech to be struck by lightning. As he stumbles around dazed, Zack does nothing to assist or call for an ambulance. He lets him walk home alone, right after Screech predicts a phone call before it rings. Then Screech yanks Zack out of the way of an accident that could have saved the world a lot of misery. Ever since the lightning, Screech sees glimpses of the future. Zack realizes Screech's high-voltage brain trauma gave him a gift, a gift he could share with the world and change it forever. So naturally, Zack swears him to secrecy to hog it for himself, then gloats about his scheme, not realizing Screech would see that. Idiot. Mr. Testaverde's reviewing. Everyone's feverishly trying to keep up. Zack goes out of his way to show he doesn't care. It's really just sad. Slater wants his radio, but Zack's feeling lucky. He wants to go double or nothing for Slater's jacket on another thrilling round of Predict the Stairs Walker. Slater makes a solid guess, but Zack squanders Screech's superhuman powers to see a trombone. A confused and cold Slater is pushed to self-harm. Zack's calling the track to see how soon he can get Screech betting on ponies. Then clumsily spills while passing Screech's phone electrocuting him for the second time in less than 24 hours. He ignores his pain and squeezes him for the three midterm questions. Zack continues his gambling marathon. He interrupts Slater helping Kelly study to propose whoever scores higher on the test will be the loser's slave for a week. Slater gladly accepts, as Zack is a known dumbass. Kelly questions Zack's sudden academic confidence. He uses hacky mind tricks to make her beg to come over for a study session that is most assuredly a sex trap. Yup. The only thing Zack's studying is Kelly for vulnerabilities. Kelly can't get any work done in this dimly lit room with corny music. Zack helps her relax with some uninvited touching, then tells her to close her eyes so he can assault her, which she narrowly avoids. Zack knows a great way to learn. Let's dance and throw books. Zack tells her to relax again as he mashes half a chub against her jorts. Jesse interrupts. Thank God. Kelly invited the gang to study. That thing they're not doing. Zack wants them to die. Where's the lightning when you really need it? Jesse is rightfully skeptical Zack knows anything. Zack says he can see the answers, narcissistically deluding himself into taking credit for Screech's talent. He says they only need to study study for three questions. Now be gone so we can jack off while this room still smells like Kelly. Screech's visions are mixed up since that last zap. He sees all kinds of test questions. He's losing his damn mind. Did you know that Lincoln freed the Japanese? Zack disregards Screech's need to be in the emergency room yesterday and commands him to see the future. Nope. Zack is boned until he gets a great idea. Zack runs every bathroom faucet, wasting precious Southern California water to impersonate Belding on a call to Testa Verde. He reports a massive campus flood. Midterms are postponed. Then impersonates Testa to Verde, calling in sick to Belding, and feeds him the only three questions he studied so Belding can deliver the midterm. Zack's plan falls apart at the starting line when Testaverde arrives to help with the crisis Zack manufactured. They deduce deceit, but who would commit double phone fraud before 8 a.m.? The same moron who didn't turn his ringer off before class. Here come the real questions. Zack blew it. When grades get posted, he walks past Kelly like nothing happened. His peers are in emotional shambles in the wake of his latest failure. Screech got an A. He did this crazy thing called study. Zack rebukes his work ethic. Now Zack is Slater's slave, and pranks him by ordering a spicy pizza he'll have to pay for, plus another one that isn't spicy after Slater takes one bite while really showed him. Let's review. Zack Morris compulsively gambled away his radio on a losing streak, then made Screech disconnect it, which got him struck by lightning, then did nothing to help. When he learned Screech got a miraculous gift, Zack hoarded it to see a trombone, then electrocuted Screech again and lost it, then made unwanted sexual advances under the guise of having test answers. Answers he did not have. And instead of alerting his friends, committed half-brain trickery that had no chance of working for even an hour. And still didn't learn the value of doing any work ever. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is calling the chess game touchdown poorly and missing no opportunity to disparage smarter students. Screech, Bayside's champ, prepares for battle with his lucky beret from his girlfriend Violet. Screech wins. He's heading to the finals against Valley. Zach sees a green light to leech. Well, with the right promotion, he could be famous. 
That could be rich. Zach manhandles Screech mid-date to sell tacky overpriced shirts with his unlicensed image. Two Valley students, who must have been held back a few years, see if Zach wants to put some action on the chess game. Zach, a degenerate gambler, jumps at any opportunity to lose, then takes a direct shot at Screech's confidence. You're gonna win, right? But Valley has a secret weapon. Peter Brezhnev, a Russian exchange student related to some of the greatest chess masters in history. Screech is scared, but Zach gives him a substanceless pep talk, solely motivated by not wanting to lose cash. He says nothing of Screech's abilities, and tells him the only deciding factor will be his lucky beret. Screech is training. Zack forcefully intrudes to sell a photo, then harasses an uninterested woman. She's Allison Fox, writing an article for Chess Boy magazine. Zack can't believe she's not there for him. Zack shadows them to mope. He can't drop it and whines loudly, throwing a horny tantrum. Allison wants to continue her interview over lunch, except Allison is from Valley. She's here to break up Screech and Violet, so he'll be too sad to compete. Her plan is working, as her attention makes Violet uneasy. And because Screech has learned from watching Zack disrespect women for years. He lets Allison wear his hat in front of the woman who gave it to him. Violet is pissed. Allison's leaving when Zack snatches the hat to loudly declare Screech needs it to win, and he should go put it in his locker. Unable to read the massive signs, he hits on her again. Shut down again. Zack reveals Allison is from Valley, and she stole the lucky hat. Because Zack tied Screech's entire sense of self-worth to a piece of red fabric, he is lost. While Screech's real friends think of ways to help, Zack tries to dig his way out of this hole with another beret. He lies and says they found his hat at Valley then turns around to sell them for his third parasitic black market enterprise in two days. Screech tries to patch things up with Violet, who only gets angrier when she sees he lost her gift and is wearing a cheap knockoff. Screech is once again hopeless at rock bottom. Instead of consoling him, Zack just shrugs. But Zack still feels good about the bet, despite the fact that Screech is ready to jump off a goddamn bridge. He stops Peter to say it's an American custom to get a pre-match picture, then shoves him in a closet to beat him up, steal his clothes, and shave his head. Zack, having assumed the idea identity of the foreigner he kidnapped, attempts to throw the game. But he can't even do that right, and declares surrender. Right as a humiliated Peter emerges from the door, Zack did not properly lock. Guess Zack had a Peter wig lying around? That's somehow worse than the head shaving. Zack explains, he only kidnapped this Russian to cheat at gambling. Belding is less than satisfied with this explanation, and wants to shut this whole mess down. Zack offers to call off the bet if he'll let them compete, shirking his wager as all avenues to cheat have been exhausted. But Screech still needs his beret, until Violet takes two seconds to boost his self-esteem, a page missing from Zack's morally bankrupt playbook. Screech wins! Zack sees a new opportunity to sell more garbage. And we never see a disgraced Peter ever again. He probably fucking killed himself. Let's review. Zack Morris exploited his friend to sell t-shirts. Then, after gambling on high school chess, made Screech believe he owed all his success to a beret. And when Screech was clearly being set up, didn't notice because he was too busy being a creep. After Zack's loud mouth got the beret stolen, Zack tried to make it all better with lies and bootleg headwear. Then, in a last-ditch effort to fix the match, committed international kidnapping, escalating tensions with Russia in the final days of the Cold War, and failed there too, when all he had to do was be a human being for two seconds. But that's impossible for Zach Morris. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. <laughs> And now, The Divorced Dad's Cooking Show. And we're back. Now, remember, raw meat always needs to be cooked in order to make it hot. Now, most of you are going to use a stove, but, uh, well, I'm afraid of mine. So, we're gonna use Old Faithful Mr. Micro. Here we go. Ah. My kids love it when I use the paper plates, so we're gonna, ah, oh, we're out of paper plates. All right, we're not gonna let that stop us, because we are doing this for the kids. Uh, you know what? A microwave comes with plates. Here we go. Oh. Put that, what, 30 seconds? Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is studying? Don't see that every day. Zach is cracking his first book, as he needs a B on the midterm to go ski with his dad. Everyone laughs in his dumb face, since he's incapable of average achievements. Instead of joining the class review, Zach gets a great idea. In Sweden, they give grades before exams. Usually a B. So students can be relaxed for exams. A lie that makes no sense. Miss Bliss tells the class about her Miss Bliss challenge. The team that scores highest on her Quiz Bowl midterm review wins cool shirts and pizza. Because of these innovative teaching methods, Miss Bliss is nominated for School Day Magazine's Teacher of the Year. She's got it in the bag. Zack is setting one of his signature mope traps to fish for Screech's hallway sympathy. He needs help postponing the midterm so he has more time to not study for that B. The one 
time I need you, the last time you said that to me, I ended up on a bus wearing nothing but my boxer shorts. What the fuck? Zack wants to unleash Screech's beloved pet rats in school, so it gets shut down, delaying every midterm so he can ski. Screech refuses until Zack dangles a promise of a double date with twins. Total fiction. Zack saunters over to see if Screech set his plague of rodents free. Screech is in spiritual freefall after going along with Zack's bidding. Lisa saw a rat in the bathroom. Screech is in pain. Zack tells her to go report it. Someone took a bite of Mikey's Twinkie. Zack says it looks like the work of a rat. If anyone knows rat work, it's Zack Morris. Zack kicks his domestic terror campaign into full gear. He commends Miss Paladrino for keeping her cool with all these rats running around. Zack savors his fear-mongering. Milo's ready to serve these tiny guests some Louisville justice. Is this a catch-and-release operation? Uh-uh. Extermination. Screech is paralyzed, having sentenced his friends to get their brains bashed in. School Day Magazine is here to interview Miss Bliss. She details how much she cares about her students and that she takes every opportunity to nurture their success. Milo interrupts. Building? We have a problem. Building announces, due to rat infestation, school is canceled for a week. Zack celebrates while Screech is distraught over the imminent violent demise of his furry pals. Zack, not listening, puts on his cool guy shades. Jesus Christ. Zack hears Miss Bliss won't get Teacher of the Year since her interviewer needs to observe her teaching and can't reschedule. Zack hogs the middle of the stairs like a selfish pee hole. He's shocked his actions have consequences and confesses his bubonic plot. Nikki scolds him for thinking an extra week of dicking around would make any difference and guilt him into coming clean. Zack sulks away to do the unthinkable act of telling the truth. Miss Paladrino checks in on Miss Bliss, who is devastated her hard-earned moment of finally being recognized for an otherwise thankless career was robbed. She cries out to God. Enter Satan. Screech is a wreck facing this heat. Zack has zero remorse or empathy. School is back on tomorrow, but if they want their detention reduced, they need to be good students and help Miss Bliss win. Zack ignores this, and when Miss Bliss starts her trivia challenge, loudly mocks her. Zack is dead weight dragging his team down. No surprise there. When he finally dings in, showboats down to the buzzer on a softball question. As the interviewer arrives, Zack signals everyone to overact, then shoots a creepy smile that sends her scooting. Now instead of answering questions, all the class is doing is transparently kissing major butt. Zack is giving banal speeches for orchestrated applause. Zack pats the interviewer, much to her horror, like that will help. Never touch me again. Not the first or last time Zack will hear those words. Miss Bliss stops the madness. This visitor is distracting from their review and needs to leave. She won't be able to reschedule her observation. Miss Bliss is fine with that and sends her off. Her students come first. Zack revels in a B on an 8th grade midterm like he just got into Mensa. Then thanks Nikki, who carried his ass to that B. He caps off his thank you with more cool guy shades. Are you fucking kidding me? Miss Bliss won Teacher of the Year. No thanks to Zack. Let's review. Zack Morris pissed away study time, then falsely promised female proximity to coerce Screech into rodent-based terrorism so he could delay a midterm he'd still fail later to go skiing and never cared or considered this would end in slaughter when his scheme crushed a selfless educator, still had to be pressured into doing what was right, then did everything that's wrong, and almost cost her the award, and had to be dragged to achieve his comically attainable grade. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash.